four girls mm-hmm. come and sit down. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my charm. Like maybe I'll get their number or whatever. And I walk up to the table and very quickly they're like, hey, um, I was very promiscuous like before that. So I just thought like, okay, someone's gonna give me a video camera and I'm gonna go into this back room or whatever. It's like, no, no. It's, like, it's interesting because you used the word perversion and yeah. distortion earlier. Yeah. But that that is what it ultimately is. It's a yeah. complete perversion of because of what I've done. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I'll ever be able to do. I'll never get married. I'll never you know have mm. kids i'll mm-hmm. never have a normal life. so i go and like you know ha- have this pep talk in the bathroom like, in the mirror of myself it's like bruce lawn we have a special guest in the house with us today crazy story some of you guys may be familiar if you're not uh you're in for a treat if you are you're in for a treat okay <laughs> uh porn star who gets born again gets saved and becomes a pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Broom. Hey man, I'm I'm just glad to be here, you know? Do you ever get <laughs> tired of that of of that tagline or are you comfortable with it? Uh, I think there was a season that I was just like, man, I'm just so tired of, <laughs> of sharing the story, but then uh you know, I I went through a period where um like especially like for COVID, like yeah. COVID like um, I did this devotional, like, well, not devotional. I did this testimonial video, like, at my church, like, mm-hmm. back in Raleigh, like, six or seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of, like, had this footage they were holding on to, and they were going to do something with it, but not sure what. And then he released it, mm-hmm. and it just kind of blew up. And then mm-hmm. I started getting opportunities to, you know, to share it in different places. So yeah. there was a period where, yes, absolutely, I was tired of telling it, but it's not who I am. It's what God has done. So I'm uh, just... Just using using the opportunity and the influence to share what Jesus can accomplish and stands ready to accomplish in contrast to it being about what my story is. Got it. We got to get into your story, though. Yeah. Fascinating, because you, you don't really hear about this type of transformation happening. Right. Right. You just said <laughs> this is your first time being back in L.A. First time. Since being born again. Yeah. Now, before, when you were still in the adult entertainment industry, yeah. is L.A., was that the hub for you? Yeah, so I, I lived uh, I lived in Hollywood for okay. the first few years, and then I got a place in Sherman Oaks. But yeah, like that was where I was, and yeah. where you know most of the industry is was, is out here in Southern California. Well, actually, it's kind of shifted more to Vegas now because Interesting. yeah, because they were so essentially um, L.A. County uh-huh. passed this like legislation regarding condoms and okay. it being mandated, and okay. the industry was like, okay, we're a billion dollar industry, we're just going to move to somewhere that we can do whatever we want to do, and hmm. they moved everything to Vegas. Wow. Which is kind of kind of wild. It doesn't surprise me though, because Vegas is kind of you know that's the reputation, there. right? I mean, yeah. I mean, for the for the most part, like you can solicit sex for yeah. you know, and it be legal. Yeah. Now, where are you originally from? South Carolina. Like, South Carolina, a really small town in South Carolina, okay. self-proclaimed watermelon capital of the world. Watermelon capital. <laughs> are you are you serious? I mean, that's what that's what they wow. say. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you end up? In, how do you end up in Southern California doing porn? Yeah, so I was doing like modeling and acting stuff like that. Okay. Started when I was like thirteen or fourteen. Okay, um, w- was in the game, but kind of like one foot in, one foot out. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do acting, but I was having more success modeling, and just you know, opportunities kept coming up, and mm-hmm. and you're just thinking like, man, if I would just put myself in closer proximity to the industry I want to be in, mm-hmm. I would have more success. So, like, second semester of my sophomore year of college, I dropped Mm -hmm. out and, you know, thought if I moved, if I was in Hollywood, it would be easy. And, you know, I had an agent lined up and all that stuff. But then, obviously, it was uh, a little more difficult and a little more to it than that. But that's why I ended up out here. Now, did you have a faith upbringing, family Christian, not Christian? Yeah, so I grew up, like, my grandparents um, on fire for Jesus. Okay. You know, my grandma's, like, watching hymns on, you know, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, yeah, every yeah. night of the week, we're going to church Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, yep. um, all that good stuff. So I knew that God was real, mm-hmm. but I never had a relationship with Him. So, like, it, I grew up in church, mm-hmm. but that stopped when I was around, like, seven or eight. Now— like, you come to L.A. with the pursuit and the hope of making it into Hollywood. Right. 
And what year is this? Like 2006. Oh, okay. So 2006. Yeah. So yeah. this is right before like social media yeah, so, and everything yeah, takes so this off. Yeah. So this is really like at like MySpace like yep. peak, you know, yep. Yep. if anyone's old, uh, old enough to remember. I was all over MySpace, yeah, man. man. Like MySpace was it. Yeah. Like I had, you know, my my uh, Little Wayne uh-huh. uh, like prof- uh, profile songs. Okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like that's, that's kind of how I got connected yep. with. Um, a lot of like the modeling jobs that I got and stuff like that, and like you know, yeah, f- roommates and stuff like that. Got that's kind of like how I figured everything out there. So you come to California. This is around 2006. You want to do acting in movies, yeah. yeah. And it's just not kind of working out for you. It's not right. going well. So as as far as like movies and acting and stuff like that, like I was getting roles uh-huh. and and stuff like that, or getting like callbacks and sure. like auditions, and I was getting like a job here, a job there. Yeah. Um, I did this like super bogus, like you know, there's like there's like B films and uh-huh. there's like C films uh-huh. where like I was in Romania and I was holding my own boom mic. Really? You know, for, <laughs> not really. But, like, <laughs> okay, I was like, wait. But, but if like if you if but if like if you were not on camera uh-huh. like speaking, like yep. you were like part of the crew. So it's Whoa. like you literally were like holding boom mics and putting down like Whoa. sandbags on stuff on lights and stuff like that. But um, I just wanted to be in that industry, so I was yeah. like, okay, you know, it's like I can be in this film, but. It was going okay, but not great. So, yeah. like most people, um, like in that grind, it's like you got to get something to, you know, make ends meet. So, right. I got a job at working at a restaurant, right? Slash right. bar, like you know. Boom. So you, you're trying to make ends meet. That the the movie career, the modeling is going, or the movie career. Yeah, it's, it's going okay. It's, it's pretty going okay. pretty seasonal. It's like okay. I, I I never did a ton of commercial stuff, yeah. but I I did like a decent amount of runway stuff. So yeah. which is like pretty seasonal but it wasn't enough to sustain yourself financially right okay right. and so being you, incredibly irresponsible didn't help okay. as well. yeah 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 hollywood yeah. you know i'm uh early 20s yes i'm assuming yeah. you're probably making the, the most financially literate <laughs> right. decisions right so you got this job at a restaurant yeah and then how like how do you enter this entire world because i'm assuming it's totally different than what you're used to or is yeah. it not uncommon for folks to come out to hollywood chase their dreams and then end up yeah doing porn yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anyone with a story exactly like mine, uh-huh. but yeah, I mean, I'm working in that restaurant, four girls mm-hmm. come and sit down, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna put on my charm, like maybe mm-hmm. I'll get their number or whatever, and mm-hmm. I walk up to the table and very quickly they're like, hey, um, w- have you ever considered acting? I was like, yes, I was like, a connection, they're going to, you know, in, you know, invite me to be part of a project mm-hmm. or maybe like introduce me to like a casting agent or something yeah. like that. And they're like, no, we're talking about porn. And I was like... A different type of acting. Right, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I was pretty taken back by mm-hmm. it because, I mean, I had seen porn mm-hmm. before, but, like, it was, like, this this fictitious thing now being real and in front of me and inviting me into their world. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, it was intriguing. It was mm-hmm. confusing, you yeah. know. And you're 21, 22 at this 22, point? 22, yeah. Wow. Wow. Now, moral compass. Yeah. V- what are very, you thinking? Yeah, very promiscuous. I'm like, yes, let's do it. You know? Oh, like, okay. Like, not like, I, I was like all about the girls yeah. and about that, but yeah. like, not like, I don't want to like have like sex on camera, yeah. like professionally. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that. Right. But, um, so you weren't one of those guys that looked at porn and thought, oh, it'd be sweet if I was a porn star, oh, dude. Oh, no. You weren't that guy. No, I mean, but you, but you were, you know, promiscuous and and had girlfriends and yeah, okay. And then for sure, I mean, the the reality was there that like if you do this, mm-hmm. there are going to be consequences. Mm-hmm. Like you don't like do something like that and there not be some type of consequences. Yep. Um. So like knowing that like if I do that, like it it will for sure like be detrimental for my career in some mm-hmm. capacity or my life. Yeah. In some capacity. So. They offer you to come, and you decide to go. Yeah, so they, they said, hey, would you like to meet with our agent? Mm-hmm. And I thought, like, okay, it, it, this sounds a little more legit. Mm-hmm. You know, you want me to, me to meet with their agent? Mm-hmm. So I go, and I meet with this guy, and he asked me, hey, um, tell me a little bit about how you grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, why are you out here? What do you mm-hmm. want to do? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just you know grew up just me and my mom, mm-hmm. and... You know, I'm out here. I, I want to act, model. I guess I want to be famous. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, "Great, you, you know, you're you're a good looking guy. There's not a ton of looking good looking guys in the industry. You have mm. acting experience, and the industry is kind of shifting to doing these parodies mm. and these large budget films. And having acting mm. experience is going to be really advantageous for you to you know be the lead in these movies. So mm-hmm. you'll be famous. People will know your name. You'll make money. You know, every, yeah. everything that somebody that in my position wanted to hear. Right." 
Do you think in hindsight he was – was it was, – did, did, in hindsight did it feel predatory or in hindsight do you think he was just being straight up? Oh, I, I think it was both. I mean he was being straight up, mm -hmm. but he was also like being manipulative in – you know, like I'm presenting, I'm gonna present this industry in a way where it seems intriguing to mm. what you're what you're telling me. And then for me, like growing up, like I didn't I didn't grow up like with my father around, mm -hmm. and you know it was tough for me because, you know, my mom had me when she was 16, mm -hmm. and I grew up in a really small town, and my dad was in the same town that Ooh. I lived in. So I saw this guy like as he got older, gets married, has other kids, whoa, and it's just like. What what's wrong with me? Wow! And then having a very high achiever personality, you know, a high uh, a high achiever personality that mm -hmm. that is perverted or distorted. Mm -hmm. I believe that I needed to prove my worth. Mm -hmm. I needed to earn my validation. I need to prove that like I I am good enough. <sighs> so I did that through Scholastic sports, yep. getting the girl that no one could get. You yep. know, getting the job. Like whatever it was, it yep. was never enough. Mm. That's heavy. Yeah, that's heavy. It makes sense though. So. Growing up, dad, you just, just over there having his own family, not no real yeah, connection. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, Sheesh, like, man. I, yeah, like I've, like even to this day, like I've probably been in the same room with him ten times, mm. and six or seven of those times have happened in the last like five or six years. That's heavy. Yeah. So yeah. this guy, this guy tells you about, you know, basically is telling you like, yeah, there's a great pathway to yeah. do all these things. Yeah. And you're like, cool, I'm in. Yeah, and if, to be honest, like I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of heartbreaking in that it's like I know if I do this, I'm never going to get to where I wanted to go. Mm. But because of my lack of self worth and mm. my lack of identity, I was willing to compromise because I thought, well, maybe this is as close as I'll ever get. And I was willing to accept this counterfeit wow. version of my dream because I thought maybe I wasn't good enough to obtain the thing that I actually wanted to to have. Wow. And you thought that back then. Oh, yeah. That's a very sophisticated thought for a 22-year-old. Yeah, but, but it's just like I'm not – but like this constant thing is like there's something bigger than me driving me. Yeah. But then at the same time like having a lack of self-belief. Wow. Like there's something pulling me in a direction, uh -huh. but I was like I don't really believe I'm good enough to obtain it. Yeah. Wow. That's heavy. So you, you go down this path. I go down the path. What happens yeah. next? Yeah, so I I do I do a job, you know, I do a, a film mm -hmm. and like for, you know, back then, like it got like like 500,000 views like the first one I did, it was on like a popular website and mm -hmm. that's viral for, you know, that world. Yeah. yeah. Especially like that long ago. And next thing I know, like people are people I know are reaching out to me. It's like I seen this and then all of a sudden my mom's <gasps> finding out like, you know, Cause it was a small town, so yeah. it's like you know, someone told my uncle that they saw it. Then my yeah. uncle told my mom, and oh my all of a sudden, I'm having this super awkward conversation. And then, very soon, I'm I'm having this very same conversation with my agent, where yeah. like that's obviously like a breaching contract. It's like you know, you you we can't be associated with you if you're doing this. Sorry, see you later. Whoa! And then all of a sudden, everything that I was pursuing and the reason I was out there, kind of you know, up in smoke. And then after, you know, I'm I'm humiliated because my mom knows this. Mm. I just got fired by my agent. Yeah. Um, you know, just just kind of scratching my head like, why did I do that? Like, yeah. what an idiot. And then the agent calls is like, hey, I would love to sign you to a contract. And man, um, I haven't got a, a chance. To, you know, I've shared my story a few times, yeah. but just really leaning into the reality. It's like, man, um, even in the middle of that mistake, mm -hmm. that agent said, hey, you know, I, I want you to sign this contract. Mm. Um, I think probably in the past I said that I believed that I had to because there was nothing else I could do. Yeah. But the re the reality was is that I didn't see myself with the ability to be resilient because the reality mm. is I could have manned up and said, okay, I made this mistake. Yeah. Maybe I can't do this. Yeah. But it, it's a lie that I couldn't do anything else. Yeah. Like yeah. that just absolute lie. Yeah. You know. So, but I believed like well. Everything you know, woe is me. There's yep. nothing else for me to do. Yep. I might as well take the easy way out and allow that compromise to further compromise my life because I, I was a walking compromise in that moment. So just like I said yes to that industry, mm -hmm. and that one turned into a six-year career. You know, eight, eighteen awards, mm -hmm. made over a million dollars, did all this stuff. But at the pinnacle of my career, mm -hmm. like I won Performer of the Year in 2012, mm -hmm. and it didn't like it. It didn't satisfy me. Yeah. I thought the money, the travel, the girls, the, you mm -hmm. know, all all the stuff. 
um, especially the award. It's like, because it, it meant I was the best. Mm. You know, it's like in that industry, it's like you win male performer of the year, that means you're the best. Yeah, yeah. And when it didn't work and it didn't like make me feel like I thought it would, I just crumbled. Yeah. So I was already like spiraling out of control, like yeah. depressed, but like that was the thing that kind of, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. Wow. How well did that first movie pay? I was only like 500 bucks. Really? Yeah. So you, you, my gosh, man. Yeah. So you're, you get paid 500 bucks yeah. for something that half a million people see on the internet. Yeah. It, it makes it its way back to your family. Yeah. So there's this degree of humiliation. The potential of the Hollywood side now falls yeah. apart because of this yeah. decision. And it was, and it only made you 500 bucks. Yeah. Wow. Now, what was it like that? I'm assuming that first time doing a film like that was totally different than every, yeah. after that. What was, yeah. that? was it? Was it awkward, uncomfortable? You knew yeah. right then, like, what did I get myself into? Yeah, because I, I mean, I was, like I said, like, I was very promiscuous, like, before that. So I just thought, like, okay, someone's going to give me a video camera and I'm going to go into this back room or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like, no, no. It's like, there's, you know, this, this stadium of Kino flows on this like little ottoman and there's camera a camera b camera c there's someone shooting bts wow there's like you know there, there's product like there's production like all over the place yeah. you know as, assistants there's people you know there's, there's catering over there people like just eating and stuff and then i'm supposed to you know perform yeah and this guy's like hey you know this uh, production assistant is like hey here's a viagra take it if you want to take it Whoa. don't if you don't it's in your hand it's yours if you've never taken it before i'd bite it in half so i go and like you know, ha have this pep talk in the bathroom, in the mirror of myself. It's like, are you going to do this? You don't want to do this. If you do, don't do it. Yeah. I, well, now I have to do it. I was like, I don't. And then I just went back and forth, back and forth. I popped the whole Viagra. The whole thing. Whole thing. Okay. And then I, and then I, and then the director's like, you know, just, just waves me into camera. Yeah. Um, never had a conversation with the girl, never made eye contact with her. Um, that like the only th the only thing that I knew about her was like the paperwork that I signed because like when you before you do anything yeah. it's like you see two two forms of ID yeah. and a copy of yeah. like a full panel like STD test and you sign those so that that was the closest I came to like Whoa. or any kind of interaction with her so do the scene and then I'm leaving and it's like I feel like literally feel dirty yeah. Got, I, I remember like having like you know, just like this grossness, like on my legs that I I couldn't wash off in the shower, yeah. and I have this check for five hundred dollars, and I'm just like, and on the check, in the in the memo of the check, yeah, it said like what s website it was, and the website was vulgar, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, I don't even want to cash this check because like it says in the memo what it was for. The bank teller's going, to yeah, get you, buddy. Like, what, yeah. Are you, what is this, it's dude? Like, yeah. Man, yeah, and the whole experience from when you walked in and when you walked out of the building, how long is that whole? That Probably whole like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. And you were on set for the majority of that. Are they telling you to stop and like reposition? Oh, every like yeah. I mean, it's 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 nothing. This is the weirdest thing. I mean, because nobody really thinks about what's happening on the other side. Yeah, because like that that's the thing where it's like, um, it's like the most awkward like photo shoot ever. But yeah. it, but instead of a photo shoot, it's it's you know it's live camera. So it's like you know there. Because you're doing it, like you're doing this this thing that's supposed to be intimacy, mm -hmm. but there's nothing intimate about it. Mm. Because there's literally like a boom mic over your head. There's a sea light underneath your crotch. Like, I mean, and there's cam there's three cameras in pretty close proximity to you. Mm. And then the director's telling you what to do, how to do it, mm -hmm. and like, you know, to open up the camera so they can see what's going on. So it's like, it's uncomfortable. It's awkward, yeah. you know. And then, and then like, if you peek anywhere, that's like, you ruined the shot. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you peek somewhere, there's yeah. like, there's like 10, 10, 12 people, like, just, you know, watching like it's a football game on or something. Wow. Yeah. That sounds very dehumanizing. Oh, I mean, that that's the number one thing. If, if, if anytime I get to speak, like, yeah. regardless of the audience, I would, I would pose the question, do you believe that all people are deserving of human dignity? Right. And, and most people will say yes. Yeah. I was like, well, I, I want to, you know, just encourage you to, to understand that. When you're watching pornography, you're actually robbing them mm. of their human dignity because you're treating a person like a product. Mm. And, and that person on that screen, because I've been there, mm -hmm. they they feel like they're being robbed of their human dignity. And then, you know, if, if you continue to do so, you just become okay with that because your behavior becomes who you are yeah. to a degree. Yeah. Wow. So 
it's interesting because you, you used the word perversion and yeah. distortion earlier. Yeah. But that that is what it ultimately is. It's a yeah. complete perversion of a beautiful gift that God yeah. is in, you know gives us and sends to be used between a man and a woman in the context of marriage. Right. And so not only is it perverting that, yeah. but it's literally selling people a lie. Yeah. It's a complete fabrication of what how it looks on screen versus what's happening behind the camera. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I think like that that's the two biggest lies that um, that exist within pornography. Like number one, that it's real mm-hmm. because it, it's it's a fake interpretation of a fantasy because the fantasy is not even real Mm -hmm. because there's cuts Mm. there's editing there's two people who are performing Mm -hmm. you know so it's like if you look i I love to like just think about like a a crazy fight scene Mm -hmm. like the fight scene from inception like in the in the elevator like that was choreographed Mm -hmm. there were a lot of cuts there were some things that were fabricated like Mm -hmm. what you see isn't exactly what happened but you believe the fantasy of the fight right. in, the, in, in pornography is the very same way. It's mm-hmm. like it's two performers. It's they're selling a fantasy. Mm-hmm. So it's like it looks like this, and you look like that. And mm-hmm. I thought this, and I thought that. It's like that's the point. Mm. The point is to trick you into trying to pursue something you can never get, mm. because you'll be, you'll become insatiable for the thing that you can't obtain, and you'll continue chasing after it. Mm. Isn't that like all sin though? Like it's it's oh, like a, it's a per, it's again it's a perversion. It's a yeah. distortion of what the real is for the sake of a fabrication yeah and then the implications of that on the human brain right even if it's even as simple as instagram you know like you you're seeing people's highlight reels yeah and a curated version and then that's distorting your own perception of what is fulfillment and what is reality oh 100 i mean i i've had the opportunity to speak at you know like large college gatherings and um, I've I had a guy in Alabama, this guy say, um, at the end, say, Josh, uh, I, I hear you and I love Jesus, but the problem is, is I've got this girlfriend and I'm not a virgin and we've been messing around. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm a guy, so I've, I've got needs. Mm-hmm. I've got, I got these desires. What, what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, number one, you, you experience something that you have an appetite for that you were never designed to have an appetite for until mm. it was the right time. Mm-hmm. But additionally, you believe the lie that something can satisfy you outside of Christ, mm. and nothing can. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, what was the process like dealing with these different women who I'm assuming— you know, you didn't have the best upbringing, but I'm assuming, right. and from what I've understood, a lot of these girls are also not in the best situation. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think when we think about that, it humanizes yeah. them, and it, and it and it and it makes you feel like, as someone that that was addicted to porn before, yeah. like it makes it, it definitely was like, man, I remember hearing Triple um, X Church and some yeah. of the work they were doing, and kind of understanding women that got caught up in that and just the overlap between that and sex trafficking and all, all these different things that, that that's not just these women who have a stronger appetite yeah. for sex that are just yeah. living out their fantasies. Yeah, that it's, such it's, a lie. It's not that. What was it like in interacting with these women and what yeah. was what was your like assessment of that of that world? I mean, it's it's just sad to see someone and, and including myself I include myself in this where like you go into a situation not even like believing that you don't even have the ability to say no. Mm. Like you, you, you are there, and it, and it, there, there's a level of coercion that happens. Um, there's a level of manipulation that happens. But like you're not really given context for what you are giving consent for. Because mm. okay. you're just, you're just, hey, sign this piece of paper. This is how you get paid. Mm. And you show up like, okay, you guys are gonna, you know, have sex. Mm-hmm. But there, there's, it's not like there's not a playbook. Mm. There's not like there's no storyboarding. Mm-hmm. It just, it just happens. And whatever the director says, you don't even think twice about it. You just do it. Mm. So all of a sudden, people end up doing things that they actually don't want to do. Mm. And um, just seeing like, see, like seeing the like, not even submission, but like this like deadness. Like mm. in in someone's eyes, where like you think that like oh this is amazing, mm. it's like they're like on another planet. Wow, you know what I mean? Like looking someone like looking at someone and then like not be there, yeah. and you're trying to do something like that. It's like, I mean, it 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 messes both people up, you know, mentally you said, and emotionally. You said they gave you Viagra, yeah, and so I'm I, I 
I understand. I thought Viagra was like for old men. Right. So I mean, that's so it's like. You, is it for old men to get an erection and then younger men just get a stronger erection, or does it help? Like, what is the what, what was well, the point I think of it's like the I think it's like the tension of the moment where it's like it. You know, there there's cameras, there's people, uh-huh. there's stuff like that. Like in addition to that, like you might be filming for two hours, uh-huh. you know, and it's like you know, start, stop, start, stop, start, uh-huh. stop, stop, and stuff like that. And even got to a point where there's some directors that were, you know, I I was taking this where there was Caverjack, uh-huh. so Caverjack is for paralysis patients to be intimate with their wives. So you in you inject this chemical, and then you have an erection for four hours, like no matter if you're reading reading a newspaper uh-huh. or you're having sex. Wow. So, I mean, it's like, yeah. Wow. And there's this level of pressure on the guys mm-hmm. because um, for for a director, a director is footing the bill for, you know, you're le- leasing, you know, the, the location, mm-hmm. paying mm-hmm. the permit, right. paying the crew, right. catering, whatever. Mm-hmm. Everyone's getting paid mm-hmm. except the guy mm-hmm. for sure. Because if the guy doesn't perform, there's no product. Mm. Yeah. So it's like so like all the pressures on the guy, mm. um, and then like if you if you like if you can't do it like the likelihood of you getting hired again. This is a brat. Right. So so there's pressure on the guy. There's drugs being pumped into you. Yeah. Taking Viagra. Yeah. Um, these are very strenuous and long shoots. Yeah. You know, and what uh, are are the women coked up? Are they giving them drugs? Are the, a lot of the, a lot of them have drug habits behind the scenes? Maybe they yeah. weren't getting drugs on set. Because you're talking about the deadness in someone's eyes and then being in another planet. Yeah. I'm assuming there's some substance abuse happening. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been multiple times where, like, girls, like, showed up, like, drunk or, or high, like, too too drunk or too high, and they mm. got sent home, and mm. they would just call someone else. Mm. Um, but I think, like, more, like the drug use happened more as a coping mechanism than an operation system. Okay. Okay. Wow. So how how do you get out of this? You're at the yeah. peak of this. Yeah. Six years in. Yeah. Made over a million dollars. Yeah. Um, and you 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 remove move away from all of it. What yeah. happened to, to to pull you out of this? Yeah. I mean, I think like it was it was the award not giving me the satisfaction that I thought that it would, and the addition of like I was in a relationship with someone in the industry, mm-hmm. and just think about like I I just want people like just to lean it like the the person listening to this, the mm-hmm. thinking like. I want to be in the industry. Yeah, like this is the reality of the industry. Like you're you're probably only friends with people who are in that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was sitting at a table mm-hmm. with the girl I was dating who was in the industry, mm-hmm. and we were at dinner with two other uh, another couple that was in the industry. Mm-hmm. I had had sex with his girlfriend, and he had had sex with my girlfriend within a three day span for for videos. Right, and wow. then we're sitting there telling ourselves to lie and proclaiming the lie that we're in a monogamous relationship. Mm. Like even being jealous of like someone looking at my girl. Yet we're we're all four of us having sex with people for a living. And just like the weight of that of someone like for me like I was very jealous. I was mm. a very jealous person because mm-hmm. I felt like growing up like I had to protect my mom mm-hmm. and that carried over into relationships in high school and college mm-hmm. and and even then. Mm-hmm. And just having that mindset it was just it just weighed on me so much like mentally and emotionally and just you know, the award and everything, it's just like this depression set in. And then I started thinking like, well, because of what I've done, mm-hmm. there's nothing I'll ever be able to do. I'll never get married. I'll never, you know, mm-hmm. have kids. I'll mm-hmm. never have a normal life. Mm-hmm. I'll never like, for me, it's like, I love to create. And mm-hmm. if I can create in a capacity that impacts other people, like mm-hmm. that's what I want to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no one's going to take me seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to contribute. And I start seeing a life that doesn't matter and doesn't really have you know, anything to look forward to. So mm. I start contemplating taking my life. Mm. And then I walk in the bank with one of these checks with a memo on it that I didn't want, you mm. know, anyone to see. And I'd been sticking them in the like ATM or Dropbox or just anything to avoid mm-hmm. anyone. But this day there was, that wasn't an option. So mm. I just went up to the teller, slid the check across the counter and transaction was normal. And I went to walk away and she looked at me and she said, Joshua, are you okay? Mm. Can I can I do anything for you? Mm-hmm. And what what was important is that um, if you're living a life of sin, mm-hmm. more often than not, there's going to be someone in your life that really loves you. Mm-hmm. And if you really love someone, um, you, you'll tell them the truth. Mm. And the truth my mom kept telling me was, "I love you, but you know you're better than that." Mm. And I couldn't deal with that, 
So I pushed her away. Mm. So I stopped answering her text, stopped answering her calls. And then all my friends who were saying the same thing also, it's like, man, you, you, you have so much potential. You could be doing X, Y, and Z. Why are you doing that mm-hmm. with your life? Mm-hmm. Push them away. Mm. So all of a sudden, no one in my life, not one person, was calling me by my real name. Everyone's calling by, by, the, by the pseudonym that I went by, mm-hmm. like my barber, um, you know, the gym that I went to, because mm-hmm. like, I allowed it to happen. And mm-hmm. I got everyone out of my life that knew me for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sitting in, this, in, the, in the bank at this moment, mm-hmm. and she's saying my name, and I hadn't heard my name in a year. Mm-hmm. And it just like shattered this wow. like, plausible reality that I created based on lies. Yeah. That's and it, heavy. And it shook me. And then I, you know, I, I ran to my, you know, spot and mm. I called my mom. Mm. And I apologized and I wept and I just felt like, you know, like what have I done? Yeah. And I picked up the phone and called my agent and put out a uh, press release and like quit. Mm. And like ran, like ran for my life. And I wish it was more like Luke 15, but it was more like just just running. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just I just ran home, but I I wanted to cover up. So ironically, so ironic. Um, I had a Celtic cross mm-hmm. on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. I got that covered up, hmm. and I and I deleted my social media. Mm. So I thought if I deleted my social media and covered up my tattoo, no one will ever know mm. that I did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like so naively, the yeah. fact there was a, over a you thousand. Didn't, you didn't try to like grow a beard or something. I, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I did shave my head. I shaved okay. my head. I covered up my tattoos and I deleted my social media. Okay. And I moved from, like you know. Sherman Oaks, California, yeah. to to Raleigh, North Carolina. So I oh, thought, you literally moved across the country. Yeah, and I thought like if I did that, like it would just all go away. Yeah. But what was crazy is that moving away, like all of a sudden, I wasn't making you know this money. Yeah. I wasn't getting this affirmation. Mm-hmm. All I was getting was, "Aren't you that guy? Aren't you that guy?" What we. What were you making at the end? Like, what was the money? You said the first thing is 500 bucks. At yeah. the end, I'm assuming you're making multiple six figures. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the last year I was in the industry, I made like close to like 400 grand that year. Okay. So, the, so, so was there some lifestyle creep as well? You just kind of living and expecting a certain quality yeah. of life? Yeah. I mean, I had like, I had several like, you know, Breitling by Bentley like watches and like, yeah. you know, I was living like, you know, yeah, I was, I was just doing whatever I wanted, like very, very reckless. Yeah. So you moved um, back. And I start well, coaching CrossFit for well, you, twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> did you did you have any money saved up? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then ta- and then taxes from the previous year came around. Taxes are the worst when you're. Oh man, especially and I wasn't paying quarterly. I wasn't. Oh. I was just like I was like because I w- I was making money where to the point where it's like oh I could just I could literally go do one you know one shoot and pay you know my rent yeah. you know. Um, so like I had some saved up, but like it it was it was gone yeah. real quick. So you moved but you moved to North Carolina. Yeah. You got a little bit in there. How much would you say you had set? Like six months of expenses, three months yeah, of expenses. Yeah, probably six months. Six months of expenses. Yeah. And you're still getting recognized. And now you're like, I'm done with this. I'm starting my life all over again. Yeah. And your your pathway forward was just CrossFit personal training type yeah, of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I was like I was personal training mm-hmm. and I was working at a CrossFit gym and I was working at Whole Foods. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. And how old are you at this point? Uh, like 29, 29, okay. 30, just turned 30. Yeah. Wow. I mean, this yeah. is the part of life when folks are kind of getting settled into their career yeah. and finding their groove. Yeah. And I'm like cleaning the parking lot of a gym, you know? Wow. Like, um, you know, I, so I worked at Whole Foods from like 4 a.m. until like 1 p.m. Uh-huh. And then I would go to the gym and work out and then work the evening at the gym. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just doing that. And I, and, just for good or for bad, like whatever I do, mm-hmm. it's like I'll somehow like fall on my feet and just like something that my mom like really instilled in me was mm-hmm. like to love people and, and uh, to work hard. Yeah. Like not necessarily work efficiently, which mm-hmm. I, I learned later was yeah. different than having good work ethic. Yep. 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 But um, had, 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 you know, worked really hard. So I was like, OK, I'm, I'm going to be the best trainer I can be. Yeah. And within two about two years, I find myself now I'm in management yep. at the gym and then in, in walks this girl. And I asked her out on a date, and like a lot of the girls that I went out on a date with, I I, I was like, I'm not going to tell them about my past. Mm-hmm. And then they would very quickly find out, and then they would take tell me to take a hike. Mm. Um, and, and unless it was just like an empty situation, you know? Mm-hmm. And with this girl, it was just like a little bit different. Hmm. And I was like, I just feel like I need to tell her the truth. I'm just mm-hmm. tired of hurting people. Mm-hmm. And also I'm tired of like every time I meet someone, I'm looking over my shoulder, just, just waiting for them to – find out about my past mm-hmm. so i tell her the truth mm-hmm. and um she just like looks at me and she's like why well, I, I didn't expect for you to tell me that mm. 
And then she How far into the relationship was this? Oh, this is literally the first. So we didn't go for it. She said no to a date, mm. but said okay to a run. Okay. So we met at a park and go for a run. And this is the first interaction we've had outside of the gym. But I've known her from the gym for a few months. Mm-hmm. And, um, but she, I tell her, I tell her that she, she's like, I didn't expect for you to say that. And then contemplates for a little bit and then looks me in the eye and says, I want you to know that, um, you are not defined by the worst thing you've ever done. <sighs> Wow. And I want you to know that you'll you'll not be defined by the greatest thing you'll ever accomplish either. Wow. She said, I believe that God defines who who you are. Come on. Who a person is. Yeah. And she's like, Do you know who God is? And then for me, you know, I was so wired to to put on the first date mask, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know who I am. I'm just gonna be whoever you want me to be mm-hmm. because I want you to like me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Yeah, cosmological argument, God, this, yes, mm. yes. How did you know this stuff? Uh just I mean I'm just a just a, a curious person, you know. Just so, you, but you were a theist at this point. Yeah, you said a cosmological argument. Yeah, that's yeah. not something that's like right. random people know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I believe that God was real, and mm-hmm. I believe He created everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and cosmological argument made sense. Like mm-hmm. there, there had to be a divine creator for the things that existed. You know, he, something had to exist outside of those things mm-hmm. for them to all happen. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, as far as far as like having a relationship with Jesus, like she started leaning in, like, mm. what's your prayer life like? Are you plugged in community? Like, what, mm. what does that look like for you? And I was like, ah, can't really fake those questions. And I, was like, I don't know what you're saying, you know? Quiet time. <laughs> yeah. What's the quiet yeah. time? I, I go yeah. quiet when I work yeah. out. I guess. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm just like, I don't know the yeah. answer. And she's like, well. She's like, just for me, she's like, I gave my life to Jesus when I was in seventh grade. Uh-huh. Both of my fam, you know, both my my mom and dad and my sister and my brother all are Christian. Yeah. Um, I'm not perfect by any means, yeah. but it's the most important aspect of my life. Wow. And I've been following Jesus for you know this long. Mm-hmm. It's like this is where I go to church and it's really important to me. Um, but anyway, uh, what kind of food do you like? And I was mm-hmm. like, hmm. Say what? <laughs> yeah. And just, and then she you know like very like Colossians like four six you yeah. know it's like her, her her speech yeah you know it was gracious and it was seasoned with salt and wow. it prompted this curiosity in me yeah and we just talked and talked and then we text all that week um, and then she invited me to church mm-hmm. and then I go to church and I'm like I'm I'm interested I'm mm-hmm. curious mm-hmm. I'm like because the the main thing was like how did you respond like that to me because mm. the thing that really got me is I've been hiding this mm-hmm. for so long and then now I'm honest with you and now you're intrigued mm-hmm. like that didn't make sense to me mm. and I walk into this church and there was this like giant like wooden plaque and it mm-hmm. said um, we want to love people where they are and encourage them to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ mm. and I was like you want to meet me where I'm at like mm. you don't know where I've been yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know me yeah. and um I go in the service and I sit down and I, and I, I listen to the message and it was good. And uh, the, the main thing of, uh, that was really striking to me was that the pastor was just like, you know, a normal guy. Because the church I grew up in, it's like three piece suit. You know, if you got a wrinkle in your shirt, you're going to hell. You know, like, <laughs> like that's that was the environment. But this guy was like t shirt and jeans, but it's like just talking about like his personal relationship with Jesus and how mm-hmm. Jesus transformed the way that he saw himself and. Mm-hmm. Um, just changed every aspect of his life. And he starts telling this story out of 1 Samuel, talking about Mephibosheth mm-hmm. and how the, you know, when David, um, you know, when David took over, like after Jonathan died, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it, in, in uh, historically, the previous kingdom would be completely wiped out because mm-hmm. they didn't want anyone to think they had access to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And Mephibosheth was the only remaining member of the family, and he thought, oh, you know, it, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I know history. It's like, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, but David sends the guard, and he, and he doesn't respond the way they thought mm. he was going to respond. He invited him into his kingdom, restored his land, mm-hmm. and, and then the pastor pivoted. It's like, well, well Jesus, mm. he didn't die for you because you were a good person. Mm-hmm. He actually died for you when you were an enemy of God. Yeah. And talking about you know, Romans 3.23, you know, is like we've all sinned and fall short of the glory yeah. of God. Yeah. And then R- Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin of death. So yeah. if we're all guilty and we're all impending death, mm-hmm. what are we to do? There's a bridge that we need that we can't create ourselves. Jesus is the bridge. Come on. And I was just like, it just made sense. Mm. Like everything made sense. And then for me, like... I think that I had this distorted picture of the Father. Mm. I was like, I can't believe the Father would provide a bridge for me because I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And then I, I heard the gospel, and it's like, you're not good enough. Yeah, 
You're, you you can never be good Come enough. Yeah. And in and and the the love that Jesus has for you and His willingness to die for you is not because of your behavior. Yeah. It's because of who you are. Yeah. And you're His. Yep. Yeah. And and that changed everything for me. And that that girl that told me that um, she's been my wife for six years. Come and on. We got three kids. Come and, on. Yeah, man. And that wow. was about eight years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how what was the window from when you move? From, two years. Uh, that was a two-year window. Yeah. And in that window where you sleeping around, oh, kind of yeah. being a knucklehead. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So so you so you walked away from the industry, but you're still just like, still living yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. Very much in the world. Yeah. So I got so many more questions for you. Okay. They've done studies and they found out that people who have a lot of partners yeah. end up having struggle with fulfillment in their marriage. Yeah. And they say this is true for men and women, but they yeah. say this is especially that this becomes a little bit more true for women. Right. Um, what was that like for you now getting married to a Christian girl? Yeah. Um, and adjusting yeah. to the reality of this. You know, like like because I'm assuming, you know, you you've seen a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what was that like? And 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 was there some post salvation, post marriage? Oh, things right. that needed to happen to your mind because oh, I think 100%. we don't talk about this enough. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a good question and a needed conversation because, like, yeah, like salvation instantaneous, yes, yes. sanctification process, yes. very much a process. Process, yes. And um, for me, like the the mental and emotional trauma that I had endured mm-hmm. was very real, and those mm-hmm. wounds were 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 very much there. Like even though I'd given my life to Jesus, so it, it was wild though because like. My wife, she like she she was like very interested and committed to following Jesus, but mm-hmm. it 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 hadn't like really happened like in her life like practically. Mm-hmm. Like she like her her relationship with God was like like somewhat legalistic, mm-hmm. um, but she was committed. Mm-hmm. And then she started like we we kind of started exploring this together. It's mm-hmm. like let's grow and let's grow in this together. And we got mm-hmm. plugged in in groups. Mm-hmm. And for me, the biggest thing that happened in my life mm-hmm. was that that same week. I walk into this church, and, you know, I'm a little wild, so I'm just like, um, can I talk to a pastor? I just want to, like, kind of, you know, process some stuff. Mm-hmm. And I walk in the, the executive pastor of this um, church's mm-hmm. office, and I'm like, hey, I feel like God wants me to build a boat. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what? Mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like I have this story that I want to share, but I feel like I need to understand the Bible to tell it appropriately. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I, w- I would love to introduce you to this guy, Andrew. Mm-hmm. His name's Andrew Yates. And uh, he's like, my family, his family actually just moved here. He recently graduated from DTS, mm-hmm. and um, they're going to help us like, launch another campus. Mm-hmm. And I sit down with him, and we were supposed to meet for 30 minutes and just kind of, you know, he's going to teach me, like, observation, interpretation, you know, application, mm-hmm. just basic, like, this is how you read the Bible. Mm-hmm. And that 30 minutes turned into, like, two and a half, three hours, and that two and a half, three hours turned into 15 to 20 hours a week, mm. and that went on for like four or five years, and, mm. and, and kind of, you know, to, in a, digitally, but yeah. continues on today, mm-hmm. and he just really poured into my life, and so like that aspect was important, but also like our commitment to following Jesus individually mm. and together, and we were like, okay, we were going to like you know, these, these classes mm-hmm. and just made a commitment to be celibate mm. and like, and just, uh, it's like, okay. Was that hard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this doesn't make sense, yep. you know, yep. because I think it's so easy to have a sinner's mentality yep. in that I've already done this, so I might as well do might that. As well, yeah, yeah. Or we're married in our hearts or we're going to get yeah, married yeah. anyway. All those. Yeah. 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 And e- yeah, especially when we got engaged, like mm-hmm. when we got engaged, I was like, oh, we're going to get married anyway. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I've already done this and we're going to get married. Mm-hmm. You're the one. So. And uh, she was just like, no. It's was like, was she, was she a virgin? No. No. Okay. So, yeah. so I asked because if she, if she wasn't, then she probably was thinking along the same lines, or right. may have been more open yeah. to that along the same yeah. lines. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so you got to stay celibate. Yeah. Get married. Yeah. And then post marriage, is there some like, like, how do you deal with that? Because, because guys have had to deal with this who look at porn. I can yeah. imagine if you. Yeah done porn yeah what that what that's done to your was, brain for for me though like i i mean this with like absolute sincerity like for me yeah. i had only experienced lust my entire life uh-huh. like sex was something that was self-serving mm-hmm. um it was an experience mm-hmm. 
Um, and for me, like I grew to know her and love her deeply. Mm. So when, like when, you know, after we got married mm-hmm. and that happened, like it was a level of intimacy that I never experienced mm-hmm. and it was actually love. Mm. So it's different. It was completely different. So it, it was, it was satisfying and fulfilling in ways that I'd never experienced because wow. like we were connected. Wow. So I, th- I think like that, like. The, the work that God was doing in my heart and my mind, like, leading up to that yep. allowed us to experience something, or especially me, like, experience something that I didn't know existed. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I got a taste of something that was better yep. than anything I've ever had, because yep. it felt like something I never experienced. Yep, yep. And so that that intimacy, because there's, there's, be, there's a difference between sex and intimacy. Right. Right? So that intimacy... And tasting the authentic way God intended it yeah. was one of the things that mitigated some of the rewiring of your yeah. brain and the sanctification process. Yeah, absolutely. But in in the, in addition to that, like I had to set like radical boundaries for myself. Okay, it's like you know if if I I love to like you know do sprints on mm-hmm. like a bike or a rower, mm-hmm. and if like the rower and the bikes were behind the steppers, mm-hmm. I know that like, there's going to be you know, uh, I think leggings are the devil, mm-hmm. you know, like, are directly from Satan. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, if there's girls on a stepper and mm-hmm. I'm on that, it's like, that, that's not good for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a co-ed, like, sauna. Like, that's not good for me. They have those. Yeah. I never knew they had those. Yeah. That's, that, that, that sounds super sus. <laughs> yeah. Co-ed saunas? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you're setting people up yeah. to just do complete oh, debauchery. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, I've never known those existed. I go to a sauna almost every day at my yeah. gym, but it's not, it is not co-ed. Yeah. yeah. That's sus. Yeah. What kind of gyms were you going to? Twenty four hour fitness. Twenty four hour fitness is a co-ed sauna. Yeah, the the one the one in uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. Well, of course it would be that way on Hollywood like, Boulevard. <laughs> it's like that, but many of them were like that. So you have these boundaries now. What what I appreciate about what you're saying about these boundaries is you're like, yeah, like yoga pants, I don't like him, but I have to go set the boundaries and yeah. I need to move. Yeah. And I need to get out of this gym and yeah. go to a gym that doesn't have these, yeah, right? I mean, like, you take ownership yeah. over your purity, which sometimes that doesn't always happen in Christian cultures. A lot oh, of times 100%. the women's fault and why oh. you Jezebel and why do you dress yeah. so, right? And it's like, no, 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 no. This is a, yeah. it's a me issue. This is my heart that needs yeah, to get fixed. Yeah, I mean, that, that's been happening since the garden. It's yeah. like, you yeah, know, yeah. like, why did you eat the apple? She told me she to. She made me do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. that, and, and, and that's our heart. Yep. You know, our heart's sinful in that way. But, man, I, but, like, for me, like so, like I had to like just go crazy about it. And mm-hmm. for me, like um, the 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 desire to consume porn and like the lustful thoughts, mm-hmm. like that dissipated somewhat. But like when I would see a girl that I would like feel tempted by, like the thing that I struggled with is like that making me angry. Mm. And I was like so frustrated. I'm like, mm-hmm. why am I still struggling with this, God? Mm-hmm. Like I'm, you know, I'm doing all the stuff that you know you you you, you you're saying that is yeah. best for me. Yep. You know, it's like. Um, I'm abstaining from this. I'm not doing this. Like why? And then just like feeling like so frustrated mm-hmm. that you know things weren't happening as quick as I wanted them to, mm-hmm. and you know, and and just like having someone that like Andrew, it's like mm-hmm. having someone that like I loved, it trusted, like accountability mm-hmm. was the thing that was a game changer for me mm-hmm. because it was someone that I could actually be honest with mm-hmm. because we're only as free as we're honest. Mm-hmm. So like with with him, it's like, man, I, I saw this girl at the gym mm-hmm. and I started thinking stuff I didn't want to think. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I, I was like on Instagram and mm-hmm. I was seeing stuff I didn't want to see. And then I started thinking stuff I, I was didn't want to think. And then, you know, and just like then I'm just like frustrated. I feel like I want to like punch a hole in the wall. It's mm-hmm. like I, I don't want to do this. And mm-hmm. it's like I feel like I can't even be, a, you know, alone in, mm-hmm. you know, in my apartment. Yeah. I just like I'm like walking the streets, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. just trying to to abstain from this. Like, why? Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. What, what did it be? I'm assuming it became easier as you got married, right. and you were able to kind of channel that into the more authentic intimacy. Yeah, yeah. But that's not an instant overnight process either. No, no. I mean, it it was for me. It's like the my not as my knowledge of God grew, mm-hmm. my intimacy with God grew, mm-hmm. and my satisfaction in Christ mm-hmm. like overcame my des- my my wrongful desires. But yeah. they didn't go away. Yep, yep. That's good. I, yeah, I, I think. Folks don't say that are honest. Men aren't honest enough about this sort yeah. of stuff, you know. Um, in hindsight, do you feel like you were a part of a flawed institution that took advantage of you, and you got what you could out of it, or do you feel a degree of responsibility where you're almost 
a drug dealer that's no longer a drug dealer and yeah. you feel like gosh i sold these kids drugs you yeah. know like I, like w which one is it because 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 a part of this is like you, it was predatory and yeah. there was some you were taken advantage of yeah especially for the first time like that's that's a raw deal you know yeah. 500 bucks and your whole life is ruined basically yeah you know but then at some point you become complicit in it and yeah. you become a part of the institution oh and yeah part of the pro so like how do you look at it in hindsight yeah, I mean, I would say both. I mean, de definitely, like, high level of ma manipulation, but mm -hmm. also, like, kind of owning owning my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I think, like, man, the, the, the greatest thing that a has happened to me in the past few years mm -hmm. is someone just came out of nowhere and just, like, dropped a word for me. And, and they were just, like, um, just out of nowhere, someone was like, hey, um, I was raped when I was, you know, a teenager and mm -hmm. I got pregnant and mm -hmm. I had an abortion mm -hmm. and I never told anyone. And I became a Christian and, you know, I had this incredible, like, opportunity to step into ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I've, and I've told some people that I trust, mm -hmm. but I haven't told anyone, mm -hmm. everyone. And it's because in, in my mind, I realized that I had justified the abortion because of the rape. Mm. And the second that I just brought it to God and just confessed it to him and repented. Mm -hmm. And, like, God gave me a, another level of healing, and all of a sudden I didn't have a wound anymore. I had a scar, and mm. that scar told a story of God's goodness. Mm. She's like, just wanted to tell you that. Have a good day. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> just want to drop that in your <laughs> <Yeah>. lap. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. That's heavy. And then for me, um, so I, I bring up, like, the Achiever mentality stuff yep. and yep. my dad's stuff because... In a, in, a, in a very real way, I justified some of the things I did because of, A, because, like, I was, like, I've already done this, I might as well do that. Mm -hmm. But also, like, I felt, like, undervalued, and I felt like I wasn't good enough, and I need to prove these things, and I felt some animosity towards my father. Mm -hmm. So, in a, in a way, I, I blamed the things that I did and justified them because of the, the father wound that I had. Mm -hmm. And then when I stepped into like the understanding that I made these decisions mm -hmm. upon my own volition, mm -hmm. I said yes. I signed the dotted line. I mm -hmm. I cashed those checks. I did these things mm -hmm. upon my own volition. I owned them. Mm. So when I brought that to God in that way, mm -hmm. and I didn't vaguely repent, I leaned you into owned it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like then, like then, and only then is like when God like really healed me in a way that, like, very supernatural. Like. Mm -hmm. Like remove thoughts from my mind, memories, yeah, yeah. Um, and just like I think there's just levels of consecration, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I stepped into this new level, and and I got access to this new freedom. Mm. Um, so, so to answer your question, um, like yeah, I, I felt this um, responsibility to the industry, mm -hmm. and it's it's much darker than people realize. Mm -hmm. And those those things that I got paid five hundred dollars for. They're still online, being mm. monetized mm. today. And there's no way to scrub that. I was going to ask, is this? Yeah. The... So I I was with um, Nicosi, so the National Coalition Opposing um, Sexual Exploitation in uh -huh. D.C. Uh -huh. and we're advocating for legislation for three things. So legitimate age verification, because right now anyone can just punch in a birthday and hop on a website. Mm -hmm. um, number two, consent being clear mm. regarding so it's like you're gonna like verbally say yes to mm -hmm. everything that's going to transpire on camera mm -hmm. so that there was there's there's verbal consent mm -hmm. and then thirdly consent having a timetable because if you pay me five hundred dollars for mm -hmm. something that that i did if you pay me thir if, 13 years ago you give me five hundred dollars for something mm -hmm. But then you're going to monetize it for 13 years, mm -hmm. and you've made millions of dollars off of it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't seem legitimate, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so now they're they're posing. Um, so the age verification is called um, the Earned Act. So mm -hmm. that'll be going to Congress this fall. Wow. And then in the spring, there's a CISIA Act, and uh -huh. the CISIA is all about consent. And okay. if that passes, then I could go to a judge saying, "Hey, this is obscene." Um, this is me, and I can prove that it's me with yeah. you know facial rec recognition, um, and I would like this taken down. I I, re I rescind my consent, uh -huh. and because it's been X amount of years, I I should be able to say I want this taken down, mm -hmm. and that's what that will do. And potentially, you could do that with all the clips and scrub everything eventually. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, because like right now, there's. So there, there's 200 cases uh -huh. against Pornhub that uh -huh. involve two things. So, it, like people not being underage, uh -huh. like people being underage, uh -huh. and then in addition, there's 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 real rape. 
mm. that's being filmed, and then people just put it up on Pornhub or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's being monetized. Mm -hmm. So there's there's someone that was with me in D.C. that was saying I was drugged, I was raped. It was it was and it's been on Pornhub for six years. Mm. This guy had been convicted, mm -hmm. and he's in prison for sex trafficking and rape. And the videos are still and up? the videos still up. Oh, that's and then terrible. you reach out to Google Images to say, "Hey, will you take these down?" Mm -hmm. They say, "Well, if you look at these images, um, it, it's not clear coercion happening in these images, so we're gonna leave them up." Yeah, and you're like, "No, but this person's in jail, right, for this thing." Yeah, <sighs> like like that is the reality of. You know the industry. Yeah. In addition to that, man, I'm, I, the the weight that I feel the most is not reaching out to the people who are still in the industry because there's 30 people that I know personally mm -hmm. who is in the industry that have committed suicide or or, or have overdosed. 30 people are dead that since wow. I left the industry, and just just feeling the weight of man, like I had their numbers. Mm. Um, some of them had texted me and checked on me, mm. and I I wasn't. You know, I was trying to like, push that industry away so that I could live this different life. Mm. And maybe they were calling out for my help. It's like, especially my friend Joe, mm. who was like my guy. And, you know, we play, we still played fantasy football together. Mm -hmm. You know, we still did all this stuff. We did March Madness. Mm -hmm. But, like, when he wanted to have deep conversations with me, I, I, pull back. I pulled back. Yeah. Is it post salvation? Yeah. 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 Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, like, I mean, I would tell him about the stuff that I was doing and stuff going on in my life. Yeah. But like when he would start start talking about the industry and stuff, I'd be like, mm. you know, I just like kind of kind of push him away. And um, yeah, man, like to this day, it's like he he um, he was drunk and fell off a balcony in Mexico mm. and died about two and a half years ago. Mm. And just like, man, I just um, I I'd shared with him like what the gospel was, mm. but like never like leaned into yeah. it and asked him some tough questions yeah um you know like i i feel a weight for that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and many of the other people in the industry have you had a chance to reach out to some of the other folks yeah yeah and, and how, and how what, is that what's been really amazing so five people mm -hmm. who like since i since since my platform like really has gotten some momentum like mm -hmm. really in the last year specifically mm -hmm. the last six months mm -hmm. Um, five people have messaged me that have left the industry who have been in the industry for a long time. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, Pornhub had a lot of their credit card transactions uh, processors removed. I think yeah. MasterCard, all the major ones. Yeah, and their Instagram just got taken down. Really? Yeah, so they yeah. have 13 million followers on Instagram, uh -huh. and it just got taken down, uh, I think, last Friday. So that's, that seems like a massive win to processing and the Instagram yeah. getting taken down. Yeah, because I mean, because the the big thing with the credit card is because I mean, we we know the game. Like mm -hmm. the they make money off of ads, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like if if the if they're if they can't run their credit card to buy the ads mm -hmm. and people can't you know make those transactions with anything involved with them, mm -hmm. like all of a sudden, like you know, once you get in someone's pockets, you get their attention. Yeah. You know? Um. So I I think I mean it's far from like a big dent mm -hmm. in the, I mean, do, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the statistics, but like more, like if you take people who visit Amazon, mm -hmm. Twitter mm -hmm. and Netflix all combined, mm. that's how much is being watched on a daily basis. And then revenue combined, the NFL, the NBA mm -hmm. and major league baseball, all the revenue combined, mm -hmm. that's how much the money the porn industry is making. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I've heard, I've heard that. Um, so my question to you is now, it seems like, today it's evolved right like when i was a kid watching it i'd yeah. use like limewire or some like right. weird site to yeah. get it and then yeah. it was like the, the the bigger websites with the, yeah. with the ads and for for me like i had never spent money on it i would right. just you know not to say that, that was any better or any worse it's just i yeah. never spent money on it but now it seems like it's evolved again yeah with only fans yeah with the cam girl business yeah but what is seen, what we found out recently, and I'm not sure how much you kept up with um, Andrew Tate. Yeah. Um, Exodus Cry just put up a thing about them. I'm supposed to be inter interviewing Benji from Exodus Cry. Yeah, that yeah. So works that, with. that's who I was in DC with. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been talking to them, and they got a, a documentary that just came yeah. out about this stuff. So yeah. it seems like the game's evolved. Yeah. To cam girls. Yeah. But now, the cam girls aren't actually running their OnlyFans. Right. That they're running, that there's usually guys who yeah. are managing them, and yeah. then 
taking all the money, you're splitting it 50-50. Yeah. And so Exodus's cry, uh, Exodus cry's post was basically saying, hey, like a guy like Andrew Tate that's teaching men how to run cam girl profiles for their girlfriends. Yeah. It, it, it's it's in a way kind of forced pimping, right? Yeah. Um. So it, you know, again, it gets really hairy with definitions and what, yeah. what's happening there. Would you say that now the industry going that direction, where technically a person can just run their own deal, or yeah. them and a spouse? I did an interview. I'm not sure if you saw it on Valuetainment with the OnlyFans. Um, she was a nurse right. who uh, married mom, married yeah. for 20 years, got married at 19, and her and her husband started OnlyFans, and yeah. they do stupid, stupid numbers, right? Yeah. And a lot of the conversations I, I, we had was like sharing the gospel and also like, do you have an exit strategy, yada, yada, yada. And yeah. She was super sweet. Um, but do you think that that, that, that shift is, is a lesser of two evils versus the industry you came up in? I would say it was worse. You'd say today it's worse. Yeah. Why is that? Because the the the, the boundary for you know the the boundary for entry, right? That the, the yeah. access. Yes. Yes. Is more, barrier for entry. Yes. Yeah. The barrier for entry. It's it's easier to get into it. Ah. So so you're saying because it's easier to get into it, and the money comes faster and yeah. bigger, that that actually has a greater net negative on the people participating or on the consumer. Both. Because Both. like because number one, you like where where's the consent coming from? Okay. Like you don't know if someone like someone could be standing behind the camera, uh-huh. like telling that girl to do that, or they're gonna hurt them. Sure. Um, or like maybe you know they're they're being kept like in a place yes. somewhere. Yes. Um, like that that's a very real thing. Yep. That yep. that that like the cam the cam girl stuff. Uh-huh. Like more often than not, that's the case. It is there's, trafficking. There's there's girls who are being trafficked. Yeah. They're being held. You know, even if they literally like. Someone was asking me this really, like a really interesting question. It's like, mm-hmm. why didn't you leave the industry? Mm-hmm. And it's or like, why wouldn't you just get up from a scene and just walk out? Mm-hmm. You really believe that you can't. Mm. What about couples though? Like this, this, this the girl I was talking to, and it's her and her yeah. husband. I mean, I would say like, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. like it's all prostitution. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, at the end of the day, you lay your head down on the pillow and you think about like what you're doing with your life. Yeah. And like that, you're, you're still selling sex for you're, money, and you're giving yourself away. Yeah. You're yeah. giving yourself away, and that costs something. Yeah. Like at, at a heart level, and, and you know, mentally and emotionally, like it, 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 it's you're giving something away. Yeah. Yeah. The interesting thing about the cam girl stuff is that Tate and his brother said that they would do all the messaging and in OnlyFans, yeah. the money is through the messaging and the subscriptions. Yeah. Right. So then you got these guys that are giving away they say he said they ran one guy up to upwards of seven figures. Yeah. And 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 their words, it was a total scam because yeah. they would lead these guys on. The girls had no idea what was being talked about or yeah. any of that kind of stuff. What's, it's just like it's like catfishing two point oh. Yeah. Except yeah, yeah, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> That's dark, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's dark. So okay, so that makes sense. So you you would you would say that it's worse. It's worse now. Absolutely. I mean, if 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 there's something that's detrimental to all people, mm-hmm. like r- both consuming it and participating in it, mm-hmm. and you and you give it to more, like and you give, let it more like people greater it. access. Yeah, yeah. It's just like the difference between like if you could only watch porn on the desktop in yeah. contrast to having access to your phone. Yeah. It's like it's it's you know it, it's yeah. more dangerous. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. That's interesting, man. You, I would think that it, it's like, you know, it's kind of like television to YouTube. Like I was yeah. thinking the opposite. I was thinking television is a system with all these people and these executives, and you got to get greenlit. And on yeah. YouTube, if you're good and you have an interesting story to tell, yeah, the barrier to entry is easier. So I would say social media has made it better for creators. Yeah, but you're saying not with porn, right? Well, I mean, it's like it. Just because someone has easier access to something, if it's if it's a bad thing, it's still a bad thing. Yeah. Like re- regardless of what it is. Yeah. That's good, man. That's interesting. That's interesting. So tell me now. Because the reality also is like that stuff that you're putting out there. Yeah. Like you can't get it back. Yeah. Well, I think that's the most problematic part. It's like it, it, so. I think that there's two lies. Yeah. It's a lie that it's not going to impact you, whether mm-hmm. if you do it or you consume it. Yes. The lie is that it's not going to impact you. Yeah. It's going to impact how you see yourself, right. how you see other people, right. and it's going to impact your integrity. Right. It's going to impact the way that you treat people. And like sexual sin is is a is a is a gateway drug, not yep. just pornography. Yep. Sexual sin is In a general, is a yeah. gateway drug because yeah. it's going to impact every aspect of your life, mm. how you interact with people, what you see, what you believe, mm-hmm. like. 
I mean, there's significant studies linked to like rape and porn. Mm -hmm. If I believe that yes means, or if I believe that no means not yet, mm -hmm. then I'm going to continue pursuing it. Mm. And and like that's what like time after time after time you keep you keep hearing that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think that believing that it's not dangerous mm -hmm. is is a a huge lie. Yeah. On both ends. So in your world, it's completely outlawed. Yeah. 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 It has to be. Yeah. I mean, it, like beyond just having a biblical worldview and believing that sex is 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 something that's to exist between a man and woman in a, in the confines of marriage. Yeah. Like it's detrimental to all people. To everybody involved. Yeah. Like regardless of what you think about yourself, like it at the end of the day, like if you are going to sell sex, whether it's you and your wife mm -hmm. or whoever is doing this, mm -hmm. like regardless of the of the the specifics, like believing that you're going to do that. And it's not going to impact you is a lie, mm. yeah. but it's still a compromise. And compromise always has, you know, consequences. Consequences. That's a, or yeah. a compromise yeah. always has yeah. consequences. Tell me about life now. Yeah. So my wife and I, we uh, we run a nonprofit called Finding Hope. Mm -hmm. um, I've been pastoring for a while. In the past few years, I got to be on staff at a large church in Oklahoma, which was amazing, great learning experience after doing a really long um, a long internship, mm -hmm. and then um, got to be on a teaching team for, for a while, and just uh, really enjoying that in my local church, but also just like traveling and, mm -hmm. you know, preaching the gospel. That's what you're doing out here right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and how often is this directly correlated to sharing this story, and how often is this kind of... You just hey man, we just need a guy to come in and teach. Yeah, so I, I think it's about half and half. It half used to be half. like far, like far more like it was just like either like sharing my testimony or like very like porn specific. Yeah. But I I I mean I I love getting the opportunity to, like just straight up like preach. Yeah. yeah. But um yeah definitely like probably like fifty fifty now. But you know two three four years ago just like almost like exclusively like sharing my testimony. That's cool. I remember. Back in the day, this about, about ten years ago, I Ron Jeremy yeah. was doing a tour with a guy from Triple X Church, and they were going around and basically having these debates at churches and colleges. Yeah. And um, what did you think about that? Did you keep Did you keep up with any of that when it was happening in real time? Yeah, it's, it's just it's just it's been kind of crazy, and it's like it's unfortunate because man, there's there's guys who have got out of the industry. Uh -huh. And um, this may be a little off topic, what mm -hmm. I'm about to say, but there's guys that have got out of the industry, mm -hmm. and even though they stopped doing it, mm -hmm. they they never, like, they never gave it up. Mm -hmm. Like, still, like, five, six, seven years removed from mm -hmm. being in the industry, mm -hmm. still going by a, a fake name mm -hmm. because it, it's tied to notoriety and applause. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's just, like, there's a level of brainwashing there where, like, you really believe that you're contributing to like couples sex life and you really mm. believe that it's not detrimental and you really believe this mm. like you really believe these lies until you understand what is true mm. like that was the i mean that for me it's That's, like that is kind of a trip to think about like we're helping yeah couples. it's like insane <laughs> it's insane that's a straight delusion man it's insane like me like pumped up on erectile dysfunction yeah. medication and this girl like with with lube and cuts yeah. and all this stuff and yeah. we're gonna create this thing that is so fake yeah. and so not sexy and and believe the lie that we just contributed to the health of someone's marriage is uh, so asinine and yeah. so like just yeah. it's just crazy it's yeah it's insane well yeah, I hear that line though I've heard Ron Jeremy say that line the girl that yeah. I that I that I did the stream with at Valuetainment she said oh we, we get a lot of couples they reach out to us and they say how much we're helping them it's kind of like yeah, I think you're being a little selective in what messages yeah. you're seeing that you yeah. think are helping people. Yeah. You know, if you get 100 messages and one of them is from a couple, that's right. a very small percentage right. <laughs> of yeah. that. So, yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, it's just like you look at what porn is actually doing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's breaking up homes. Like, like divorce rate is yeah, through the roof. Um, guys are committing suicide. You know, yeah. they're... I, I think like men in general who are addicted to pornography, they don't understand friendships because mm. they don't understand intimacy, they don't understand integrity, and they don't yeah. understand the reality of having connection with a person. Mm. Um, and I and I think it's like, man, if I got this lie hiding in my back pocket, mm. and I'm a little bit of ashamed of it, and I'm I'm believing that, you know, it, I have this consumer mindset of a person's a product. 
man, Ruslan, the second that you can't do something for me, well, we, we can't be friends anymore mm. because you're no longer serving the, the purpose of our, our engagement or yeah. our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, there was some molestation in my childhood that yeah. then followed me into high school and then kept the, the porn thing started early. It was like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. You know, yeah, actually younger than that. Now that I think about it. First time I saw porn, I was five. Yeah. And, um, it was something that as an adult, as a married adult Christian created a cognitive dissonance Yeah. in terms of, I have two polar opposite things that I have allegiance to. And that in and of itself created a bottleneck and a ceiling, I feel like, in my in everything. Yeah. My marriage. Yeah. My career. Yeah. You know, and it was once I got really freed up from it and I confessed and yeah. just went to we did this thing called men's skills at my church. That was like a group therapy, Bible study, psychology class. Yeah. Um, I have a I have a therapist I see a couple times a month now. Once I was able to deal with it, yeah. And finally, like it not be a stronghold over me. And by yeah. stronghold or addiction, I mean literally like you feel like you don't have a choice in the matter. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. Once I was able to conquer that and 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 practice the law of replacement and form better habits and, and, yeah. and things to replace that, um, it was de it, it was definitely like, man, I've been seeing the world with like this weird black and white filter on it. Yeah. You know, and and now there's freedom and there's hope, you yeah. know. And, uh, and, and it was, but it was hard and, and it required a lot. And so we ended up, me and my therapist actually put together a course. It's called mastermyhabits.com yeah. to help men um, and women who are struggling with this sort of thing so that they can have not just like, this is bad, yeah. but like, this is bad. Here's why. This is what it does to your brain. This is what negative yeah. habits do, addictions do. And this is how you form better habits and healthier yeah. habits to replace that. You yeah. know? And so it's been really cool. I think we've had, how many people have gone through a class, Zach? 5,000? Yeah, about 6,000. 6,000 people wow. go through the class. That's powerful. Um, and we're going to do part two. Me and my therapist are going to do part yeah. two. That's amazing. To, to help people kind of kind of go into like, okay, now what is manhood and leading look like once you have these habits? And what does that look like in a marriage? And what is what do yeah. these things look like as a, as, a, as a man who's functioning and leading? You know? Yeah, that's good. And just makes me like uh, Second Timothy uh, two, like twenty through twenty seven, mm -hmm. like talking about you know the vessels of wood and clay and yeah. gold and silver. And it's like, like in a lot in a in a very real way, like your co your capacity to operate is dictated by your level of purity. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And it's just like you know, for me, you know, I I had to spend a lot of time like you know thinking about like Second Timothy three sixteen, or like if if, if all scriptures God breathed. Mm -hmm. I um, mean, it's good for, you know, teaching, rebuking, reproof, and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And and I really believe that Scripture is inerrant and infallible. If I can trust it, and, it's, mm -hmm. and I can trust where it's leading me, mm -hmm. then I've got to destroy and demolish some of the, the truths that I believe yeah. and replace them, like you were saying, with God's truth. Yeah. Because I've been living a lie. And yeah. if, if, you, if, you, if you, you can build a world based on lies, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah. Like people do it every day. That's, man, that's heavy. Build a world. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the best thing to do is just come out, you yeah. know, and, and, and deal with it and face it head on. So, yeah. Way cool, man. Any final thoughts? Yeah, man. Just, um, I think, like, just, just really, like, if, if uh, I think the biggest thing I would want to share is that something that you touched on. Like, I get probably 2,000 or so, like, messages. Um, per month, uh -huh. I'm I'm addicted to porn, but I love Jesus, mm. and it's and like, it's and it makes you believe like, okay, well, am I alone? Mm -hmm. Well, you're not, <laughs> you're not alone in that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a real struggle, but you don't have to stay there. Yeah, and it's not going to be easy. Like like any habit yep. that you build over time, mm -hmm. like you can't snap your fingers and and change something that yep. you've ingrained into your mind yeah. chemically, physically, and emotionally mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like there's the grace and the space to grow, but like it starts with being honest. Like take inventory of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, like wh what do I need to remove so I can move into a different direction? What, what am I consuming? Who's leading me? Mm -hmm. um, what am I watching? What am I listening to? And then now set some boundaries. Like yeah. put some boundaries in your life. You, yep. If you don't want to do the thing that you've been doing, got to do something. Put something yeah. in the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. got. You got to. Re and then replacing habits with yeah. better habits. Maybe I need to get in the gym. Maybe yeah. I need to eat a little more healthy. Mm. You know. Maybe I need someone in my life because I think 
And like right now, something that I'm really passionate about is, is you know, just having a little bit of influence with um, some young adults. Um, it's like, man, go find someone to mentor you, mm -hmm. like have someone that's pouring into you mm -hmm. and someone that you're accountable to because like you're only, again, like you're only as free as you're honest yes. and you can live a lie and you can skate by, but man, if you really believe that Jesus is real and you really believe that he died for you and he rose again, man, why, if you're free, why don't you act like it? Yeah. Because there's a life worth living and it's on the other side of porn. Yeah. That's good. Simple but not easy. No. Simple but not easy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Man, thank you so much for doing this, brother. Yes, sir. Guys, man. check out uh, Josh on all social medias. We'll we'll link that below. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I'm excited to see what God continues doing with your ministry, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much.